Darren, uh, a disappointing result mm. at home today against South End, two uh, nil. Uh, just talk us through how you saw the game. Yeah, look. Uh, first of all, I, I always want to be this, and I want us to reflect this as a club. But I thought South End were excellent. I thought they were really good, performed really well, and they've got that um, continuity, that consistency to their play, their system that we obviously haven't got. I mean, that's clear for everyone to see. And um, I thought that was telling today. I thought their connection and harmony between the team was a lot, lot better uh, in in every foreseeable sense. And with the with the centre forward in the form he's in, they became a very, very difficult opponent. You know, they're playing at a very high level at the moment, despite the off the field um, aspect. And um, I thought they played at a very high level today. And we were, you know, probably as bad as we've been since uh, I've been manager here. And Cardwell is obviously uh, a danger man. He's in, mm. as you say, he's in top form. He had a lot of space. I mean, that, that the first goal and the second, he dropped yeah. off, and it was his header that really made yeah. that goal. Was that down to our errors, or was that just his good play? A, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. When you when you look the when you can see goals, there's, there's like a trail of breadcrumbs. It's never one thing. Um, so the the trail of breadcrumbs for the first goal, we defended a, a, a goal kick. And our start point as a unit, the defensive unit, was wrong, which meant other players went to challenge. I think it was Bradshaw that went to challenge. We head it off. And then our shape to defend the throw was very good. But the way we implemented that shape once the ball had come in play was very, very poor. And, um, uh, and when Scott Morris runs off the back of Lewis and gets that crossing, look, you know when forwards are in form, the last thing you need to do is to leave them vacant. And uh, he seemed to um, lose... Um, Cuthbert and Taylor, uh, and, and get himself in a really, really critical position. And it was a, it was a very good header. I mean, the, those the chances are not easy chances, but when players are in form, you know that you you can't present them with those opportunities. And teams, uh, I mean, football is an art, not a science. You know, so there's a thing about chemistry, isn't there? Mm. You can have really good players, but the chemistry might not be there. It was you changed nope. at half? You changed at half time today. At, Absolutely, absolutely. The, the the chemistry and the harmony and the connection of the players definitely not there. As for all clear to see, and we're neither committed at one aspect or the other at the moment. And um, and listen, it's all hindsight. It's all hindsight. But if Williams had had more than a day with us, and O'Connell would have had you know more than a day with us, um, maybe that would have been the um, the better solution. But we're playing out of balance. Uh, we're playing um, different systems of play to try and meet the needs of what we have available. And, um, you know, the, the, all of those things were, were, were missing in abundance today. I thought Morgan gave us a little bit more productivity. Charlie gives us that lovely, wholesome, committed feeling, of course. He endears himself straight away. Uh, and I just thought we needed, a, you know, a little bit more teeth at centre forward and Greg Cox is, was ready for 45 minutes, so the plan w w was always to try and get him on at half time just to build his fitness into the game. Um, and I thought Alfie was struggling. I thought Alfie really struggled today with the tempo and the the, con uh, the consistency of which he's needed to play after coming out part time football. So um, it, I thought it was absolutely no brainer to get Reese on the pitch mm. and try and get some technical quality into midfield because we were we were sadly lacking in any sort of service into the front man and any chances therefore created. And I suppose the midfield, uh, with no comment about the individual players, I think have all done very well, but you've got three quite similar, or certainly Akinola and Bradshaw, young, quite Correct. similar, Ince coming back from injury. Uh, do, was there an element of them bypassing midfield to put the pressure up front? or, in, or how? No, I, I, thought, I thought our service, you know, midfield becomes, especially when you play a midfield three, it becomes a pivot of the team. It becomes a central, you know, a nucleus of the team. And I thought the service from, you know, midfield was poor. So what then happens is we take solace by playing backwards. And then our defensive unit is the team that has to serve the centre forwards. And what does that look like? That looks like a big long ball from fullback or central defence. Mm. It's normally in the air. There's normally an, an, a confrontation or a duel. And then it looks messy. And then the duels and the scraps can go either way, depending on know which way the, the penny drops but so I thought we looked messy in that sense and I've just wanted to see I've not seen a great deal of Morgan not seen him um, you know we're not I haven't been blessed with um, time when we've needed to recruit desperately um, but 
I knew that he had a competency at, technically and I wanted to give him a go. There was, there was no point continuing on the same path and expecting a different outcome. So I wanted to see him and I wanted to see him and I thought in real phases as a young player, he did some very good things. He obviously has to adapt very quickly to what it would be like to play week in, week out as a senior. Um, but he might get that chance sooner rather than later here. And just taking a step back from today's game, just uh, I mean, uh, good win at Fylde, uh, and then but three or four disappointing results mm. at, at home. So as the fans are going home, what the big picture? What what would what message would you have for the fans? As well, look, the, the, the big the big picture is that <laughs> we need to get the players that were recruited to play forty six games back on the pitch. Yeah. And what this isn't this football club, this isn't a, an endless money pit where you can just sign, sign, sign while they're all injured. So we have to work, you know, we have to work with uh, restraint and we have to work with caution and we have to work with our contacts in the game that are going to allow us to, you know, some favours. Um, but then we're going to need to just get our, our stronger players back in. You know, the team without Wilkinson, Casey, Anderson, Oyeleki, Kellerman, Brown, Lewis Walker, uh, all of those, Corboa. I mean, they're good players mm. for our football club. And, the, and you know, and there's good evidence around them that they are good players for our football club. So we have to have enough time, um, especially medically, we need enough time to rehabilitate them so that they're not coming back in too early and then coming straight back out for another two or three weeks. And unfortunately, that's time. And there's nothing I can do about that. We can't sew a hamstring up any quicker than the physios are doing at the moment. But we do have to make an expectation of the standard of what we what we desire when we come to Woking to watch any team play. And we were well below that level today. There's, there's no excuse being made for having injuries in that sense. We were well below our level. And the disappointing thing is that level now is in almost contestation because even when we've played well in inverted commas and created lots and lots of chances, we haven't won those games either. Mm. So the level of the team has to be addressed. Of course it does. And, and the way we're presenting that team has to be addressed. Of course it does. Um, and we'll have to do that. But, you know, it won't be this um, kind of magic wand thing. And I'm, I'm delighted that we're, you know, in and around the top half of the table with the, with the injuries we've had. And we just need to stay in around it. That's it. Uh, yeah. I mean, so many teams last year, the playoff teams, very few of them were like us that just sat in third or fourth the whole season. Lots of them teams came very, very late on with a whoosh of momentum and uh, and, and, and steam, and uh, and created that way. So it's going to have to be that one, I'm afraid. So there, no, there, may, there, there may be some more torture before there's relief, <laughs> and um, but that will come because these lads are not they've not got career threatening injuries. But the problem is we've created a dynamic here that um, you got to win now, you know. Yeah. And we've and we've fed our supporter base a lot of really great nights and wins and home performances and at the moment we're not we're not meeting that you know we are not meeting that standard so it's very very obvious we've got nothing against you know if anyone said anything to me or if anyone was disgruntled we're all human beings we all know what we're in you know we all know the trade we're in and we just keep working away brilliant thank you and then finally uh i'm, I'm sure you'll talk during the week anyway but fa cup week next week we're at hemel hempstead any initial thoughts on that? Very quick thoughts, because we're... no, look, we, I think we've got enough to think about internally at the moment in terms of our standard, our availability, our recruitment, all of these things. So I think Hemel actually is um, will be a byproduct of a, uh, a productive week internally. I think no matter the opposition at the moment, this is going to be a tough game, even if it, we were, um, you know, in really good form. Um, playing Hemel will always be tough because when you play those uh, teams that play in leagues un uh, lower than yourselves, you can already organically add 20% performance increase to them without even kicking the ball. So we're going to have to be a lot better. We play like we did today, we'll absolutely get beat. No, no ifs and buts about that. So we need to make sure we work internally on what we're doing and forget about what else is going on outside because you know we've got to deliver a lot more than what we have today. Brilliant. Well, thank you for your time. Have a good week and we'll see you at Hamilton. Thank you.